He has always been. Uh, we have seen in the days when he was a president, uh, we, we attracted good numbers in KwaZulu-Natal. Uh, for the two terms that he has served as president, even when uh, we were facing difficulties in terms of the percentage, KwaZulu-Natal was able to shift the balance in our favor. And uh, we characterize it not as a phenomenon, but the Zuma factor. And so that is what it, 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 we have been grappling with uh, over the years and all of that. And uh, in this particular instance, uh, we knew going into this election when he has taken a stance to form a political party, that most definitely that is going to eat in the base of the ANC. Do you think Mr. Zuma cost you the election, a majority? Sorry? Do you think that the former president cost you this election, cost you your majority? Yes, uh, he did uh, cost uh, uh, the ANC majority. I mean, I look at KZN, we dropped uh, from higher numbers in the legislature and all of that, where did that number come from? It came from KZN. The MK party has uh, taken members uh, from the EFF, from the IFP, and largely from the African National Congress, and basically became number one in Guazulu Natal, and then became number three in the National Assembly. Where did those numbers come from? And they took also from the DA in Guazulu Natal. Uh, in terms of uh, some of the sections of uh, society there. And then it did not do well in the rest of the provinces. Would you say but he... the biggest number come from there and um, Pumalang. To close, would you say he outsmarted you? He, he, did not, he did not outsmart. We tried to fight the obliteration, but we failed. And, uh, uh, and he emerged. You must understand this, that... Zuma got support even in areas where he did not campaign. Yeah. For instance, here in Johannesburg, in areas that we know have been IFP stronghold, in the hostels, they've all gone to Zuma. And then uh, uh, he has even won the awards that he did not win, including his home, own hometown. And then Ganda, for the first time, he won it when he stand on his own. So that tells you... Will you congratulate MK? We have congratulated all political parties today in our statement, MK included, DA and everybody, EFF and all political parties uh, who, have, who, have, who have gotten something out of the elections and are in the leaderboard on their way to the National Assembly and the, and the provincial legislatures. Congratulations to all. So this is what happened. Uh, so we were doing very well uh, after 2019. We did well in 2019, and we did well in 2021. And then we, we had a slight decline now. Why? The people who were supporting President Zuma after 2019, I mean, when President Zuma was removed, they had no any other home because they didn't want Syrian. So they ended up coming to us. Uh, not coming in a form of taking membership. But when it came to voting, they said, well, uh, amongst other this, this parties, the closest to what we, we, we want is the EFF. And then they went to vote for the EFF. That's why if you look at the number of the EFF, which shocked us, and it is now being explained by this, in 2019, we were just sitting and then we get 350,000 votes. We were like, uh uh. In Guazul Natal, eh? which one's from where now? What happened? What did we do? We were shocked by, num by receiving numbers. We, we even told you this. We repeated it in public platform. We don't know where those numbers came from. Now if there is an explanation. Those people were never ours. They were President Zuma's people. So, it's good they found their home. They, they must relax in their home. There is absolutely no problem. We are fine. We are fine. We are fine. We are fine. This is us. We are complete now. There is no, there is no borrowed vote. So, uh, that's what explains uh, CD. There is nothing that you can say the EFF didn't do uh, and, and all of that. Hey, maybe that's why they did not get people. We got our people 
and people who had borrowed us our vote, their vote, found a new political home, and then they went there. Remember, they didn't want Ramaphosa uh, in the ANC. They lost. Then, they, when they went to the polls in the country, they didn't vote for him. They voted for the EFF. And then they, when they went to arrest the old man, then it was a mess. A, a discussion which I had with President Ramaphosa. But you can't do what you are doing. You are going to make him a hero. Because it's not explainable what you want to arrest him for. So, and, 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 and July unrest should have told us that the man has got some support somewhere. Uh, and, and start treating him with care. But even after taking him out of jail, they still go on to harass him and all. None of them has, have gone to him to apologize. So, but we are happy, we are the happiest because we have achieved our mission in our lifetime. And that mission was to bring the ANC below 50%. That's what we have always told you, that this animal is going to be eaten piece by piece. So, Reina, we were holding on this other piece, preparing to go to the other piece, of the animal. Hey, hey, Zuma arrived and took that piece. <laughs> we're eating piece by piece. And then Zuma went to take the piece we're going to. But we don't complain. We want to humble the ANC. The ANC is very humble. All of you, you can go on social media. All of them have disappeared. They have nothing to say. Slay Queen Isona. Some of you are going to tell you that you are going to be slay queen. You are going to be slay queen. You are going to be queen. No more money for slay queens. It's done. We've taken the purse. The purse is gone. You can go and look at the ANC in Swan. Go and look at the ANC in Kurule. Go and look at the ANC in Jobek. They are dysfunctional. They have no direction because they lost power during local government. That disarray, you are going to see it at a provincial level, thanks to the EFF. Well, the truth of the matter is that uh, the people of South Africa have spoken. And uh, on behalf of the UDM, I thank the voters who had confidence in us and we will continue to occupy the Chris and hit them for fours and sixes being uh, the people who are betting on a wicket of promoting ethics of good governance and anti-corruption and I'm hopeful that uh, the voters are beginning to see how I wish to also to congratulate uh, Msholozi for having changed the political landscape because this country doesn't deserve a one-party dominance. That's why the corruption is so high. So let's hope that the leaders now will sit around the table and compare notes. Firstly, our manifestos, and then later we can talk about leadership. But the key is that by Wednesday, next this, uh, this coming Wednesday, the leaders of all political parties must have shown the direction and show maturity but we need a government as of next week. The DA's federal executive has unanimously adopted a resolution to initiate exploratory talks with other parties that share a commitment to the South African constitution and to identify options for the formation of governments at a national and provincial level where no party has obtained an outright majority. To facilitate this process, the Federal Executive has appointed a negotiating team composed of Arvin Mayer, Savibe Gahube, Alan Windy, Tony Leon, and Ryan Kutsia, as well as Helen Ziller. They will facilitate this engagement with other political parties. The purpose of these initial talks will be to gather information of what options are available to the DA as we seek to rescue South Africa from doomsday. 
Well, firstly, yes, we've lost 1% uh, in comparison with uh, specifically the 2019 election. But we must still remember that we are still uh, double the number of representatives which we had in 2014. So, yes, we are there. And, of course, as a political leader, I would have wished that we had the 1% more representation. But I always say, you know, an election I see as it's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. So in 2019, we got the best. And now, not the best, but we will continue. And I want to say, I really see forward for the seventh parliament in South Africa. And the reason I say that, the ANC won't be in a position to misuse its majority to make parliament a rubber stamp to the interests of the party. They won't be able to misuse their majority to protect their leaders like they admitted. I mean, on the previous president, they even said that they lied to Parliament to protect them. I'm going to request that, for instance, the panel report on the Paula Paula issue be reintroduced in the National Assembly. So we say we are going to play a very strong opposition role to ensure that the executive, the government, do whatever it may be, will be accountable to Parliament. And that is what we need in a constitutional democracy in South Africa. And we will take the lead. We will take hands of other opposition political party leaders to ensure that. If we can put up a, a fight with the ANC, they only got about 40%. Uh, they had 58%. So they are weak at this moment. And you must also remember, if they are the executive and the government again, uh, they were as far as the number of ministers they have in the executive council, then we say that we know that in parliament they are not going to be all present at every time that they, when there is, for instance, a very important decision to be taken. So the ANC is not strong anymore, they are weak. But the opposition as opposition party leaders, we became strong after this election. The status is that as far as we see it, that the multi-party charter actually did not, we succeeded to ensure that the ANC is not a 50% plus one. So that uh, nobody can deny. We were successful with that. We were not successful to establish a, uh, can I say, opposition coalition government. So in that sense, we say that in terms of the agreement, from my view, is that it came to an end. But I say that there should be a continuation with the opposition political party leaders, although differently structured as it is at this moment. So there is still a role to play in terms of opposition party leaders to ensure accountability from the government. Uh, the, the, uh, the president remains a president and, and uh, until a new president is sworn in at the inauguration. There's going to be a parliamentary process that stays in members of parliament and then elect a president of the republic. That president, uh, that process, is uh, the, the parliamentary system is determined by the chief justice. When members and, and members of the par of parliament are sworn in uh, by the chief justice as the author of the republic, after that they elect a president uh, of the country. That president becomes president-elect, but the president remains until the president-elect is sworn in on the inauguration. Day. We'll announce the date of the inauguration. Ministers, on the day the president, a new president is sworn in, ministers stops being ministers. Then the president, the new president will then announce his or, his or her own cabinet.